Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Virtual Executive Director Podcast. My name is Becky Caldwell. I'm your host. I am an executive coach for nonprofit and mission-driven leaders, and I also serve as the actual executive director of the Virginia Highlands Festival in Abingdon, Virginia. So um, let's see. This week, the podcast is, uh, as always, sponsored by our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for everyone who contributes to help keep this podcast going and help keep it a free resource for so many people. If you have not clicked on the little Patreon link, I encourage you to do so, please. We are looking for just $2 a month. And that will, um, if, if, if more people do that, then we can, um, we, we can make this work for longer. Um, next up, I want to mention that, uh, As an executive coach, I do have programs that are um, like I I customize everything for each of my clients. Um, However, that said, I do offer a specific entry level 13 week program that gets you um, gets you aligned with your goals and gets you really jump started in achieving them even right now. So um, this thing, this phrase came to me, the phrase, plant your tree before you need the shade. And I can tell you right now that my clients who are weathering this COVID-19 public health crisis, those who are doing okay right now are doing okay because we started working together two months ago. And they had set up systems already and already had improved communications and improved their self-care and improved their, um, their working relationships and their partnerships in such a way that they are able to, um, to get through this better than a lot of other organizations I'm seeing. So putting that out there, I have this executive coaching package. It is one-on-one. It is 13 weeks. And then we see about extending um, so I encourage you to visit virtualexecutivedirector.com to learn more about that. Uh, the other thing that I want to let you know about is, um, this idea of, of reclaiming your time. And that's, that's what we're going to talk about today, because what I've found in our community is that we are, um, a lot of us are working from home. Now I, I work from home a lot of the time already, but a lot of, a lot of people in our community are working from home for the first time and it's challenging. We are in a, a, a time of, um, of public health crisis, a crisis moment where there's a lot of news and information that's coming out very quickly and things are changing very quickly for our economy and, uh, and, and just basically like what we are allowed to do as our organizations right now. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things vying for our time right now that weren't doing so just a few short weeks ago. And, um, so I'm going to talk you through very quickly, uh, the exact method I use to keep my day from controlling me. Um, so on with the show. So the name of this program was inspired by Representative Maxine Waters from California. Who remembers this exchange from uh, about two or three years ago? With the House Reclaiming Intel my Committee, time. Reclaiming with the Senate my time. Judiciary Reclaiming Committee. my time. Okay. Reclaiming Matter of my fact, time. Mr. Reclaiming Secretary, the, time. the time belongs to the gentlelady from California. How many of us get to the end of our day, our work day, and just want to just want to say reclaiming my time, reclaiming my time, or uh, you're in the middle of let's say, oh, this has happened to me before. I'm writing a grant and get just like the incessant phone calls that will not stop. And they're from people who you really have to answer the phone for. Um, or what about, uh, you get, you get the, 
well-meaning staff person who ends up wandering into your office and just sitting there and complaining about things for 30 minutes. And you're like, uh, reclaiming my time, reclaiming my time. Um, so that is, that is what this, uh, this week's episode is about. It's about reclaiming your time so that you can focus on your priorities and on, on getting your mission accomplished. So I have this, um, this sort of three-step process that I've developed and I've developed it over the course of nine years as a freelancer and eight years as the only full-time paid staff person for my organization right now. And, um, so let me walk you or I'll talk you through it a little bit and, and then I'll let you know how you can get it for yourself. Right now, it is very easy to feel overwhelmed with all the information, all the things I need to do. So I always start with a brain dump into uh, the Eisenhower matrix. And it's the Eisenhower matrix named after President Eisenhower. And it's, uh, you may have you may have heard me talk about it before, and you may even have used it before yourself, but that is always my starting point. And so I identify um, what are the things that are urgent and important. Those are the crisis kind of things. What is um, not urgent, but important. That's more like the long range visioning. Um, what is, let's see, so that was urgent, important, not urgent, but important. Um, urgent, but not important. And those are the people popping into your office most of the time, let's be honest. And then uh, the quadrant of not urgent, not important. Like, why are you even doing that? Um, so I brain dump into those four categories. And then I use Gary Keller's concept of the one thing to identify and, and sort of pare down into a few manageable things that I can do. And I, yes, I know I just said the one thing and then said the few things, this is the thing. Here's the thing about the one thing. Um, the one thing is a concept you can use in several different areas. So the, the question that you, that you use to narrow, narrow down to your one thing is what is the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else becomes easier or unnecessary. Um, so the reason for maybe several one things is because I would categorize like, okay, I know fundraising is an important part of my job. So what is the one thing I can do for fundraising right now, such that by doing it, it makes the rest of my fundraising efforts easier, or maybe even unnecessary. Um, what is the one thing I can do for marketing my organization? What is the one thing I can do for board relations right now? So those are, that's how I use the one thing and, and in conjunction with the Eisenhower matrix. So, um, <clears throat> so now you've got your, your priorities, right? So after going through this, you should have a really tight and impactful list of what your priorities are that are going to get you the, the results you want for your organization. Next step how to hold yourself accountable. Like that's the next thing to figure out because you have to have some measure of accountability. Otherwise you will be overrun with those urgent, not important things. Um, the way that you figure out how best to hold yourself accountable is to take Gretchen Rubin's quiz on the four tendencies. The four tendencies will, will show you how best to hold yourself accountable. So do you need external accountability. Those are the obligers among us. Do you need uh, only internal accountability? Like once you make the decision for yourself, then you can make anything happen. Uh, those are the questioners among us. Uh, are you an upholder? So an upholder is someone who needs or who responds favorably to both internal and external um, expectations. Or are you like me and you're a rebel and you respond to neither internal nor external expectations? <laughs> yes. Our motto uh, as rebels is you can't make me and neither can I. So that we, we have other, we have other methods as rebels in uh, to, to get things done. But 
identify your tendency, and then you'll know how best to, uh, to power through. Okay. So you've identified your priorities, you know how to hold yourself accountable. Step three is to execute the plan. And there are three steps to executing your plans. Now, the first step is self-care. And it may sound counterintuitive to some of you who may be listening to my podcast for the first time, but self-care, especially right now, practicing radical self-care is what will allow you to do everything else you want to do. So number one, take care of yourself, whatever that looks like. Step two in executing the plan is allotting think time throughout the day, because you do need time to process what you're doing. You need some time to quiet your mind so that you can respond rather than react. So a lot, some think time around your issue, whatever you're dealing with. And then step three is to calendar some focused work time. So focused work time, that's the key is that, and you put it on your calendar. So you are only working on your one thing in that whatever category of one thing you're working on. And so, um, so that's the three step sort of execution plan, self-care, think time, and then focused work time. And that is how you can reclaim your time. Reclaiming your time. What, what would it make possible for you if you found yourself, I don't know, with an extra hour or two in your workday, because you're able to actually execute on your own priorities. Oh my gosh. Like, I just got excited. Um, so think about that. What, how many of you, I say you, I, this still happens to me on occasion, uh, especially in the last week, quite frankly. So how many of us get to the end of our day and we're like, well, I have no idea what just happened, but I'm exhausted. That is, that is what I'm seeing across our whole of, uh, of like nonprofit industry, um, that we're reacting to so much right now that we're losing sight of our own priorities. And in the process, by the way, we're exhausted. We are, um, mentally, uh, not capable anymore of making quality decisions because we're so burned out and, um, and we're not moving our mission needle forward at a time when, when our world needs us to do that more than ever. So think about, think about this reclaiming your time process and, uh, and see, see if it works for you. You know, like I have completely outlined it right here. I'll include links in the show notes to all the various resources. And especially if you want this all in one place, in one toolkit, I will make that available for you, um, through my website, virtual executive director, and I'll have, I'll link it also on the virtual executive director, Facebook page. So Just a quick recap. Number one, uh, brain dump into the Eisenhower matrix and then determine your one thing. Step two, figure out how to best hold yourself accountable. And step three, execute on the plan by practicing radical self-care, setting aside some think time throughout the day and putting on your calendar focused work time. All right. Sounds simple, doesn't it? (laughs) Let's all just go do it. Um, (laughs) oh gosh, look, I know right now things feel, may feel overwhelming, may feel scary. Um, maybe a lot of you got laid off in the last week. I know that's happening. Um, that may happen to me for part of this year or a massive reduction in, uh, pay. I, I get that. Look, I get that. We are all in this together. And I want you to know that you are supported. You are. You are supported by me. I'm here for you. 
you are supported by your fellow nonprofit leaders. You're supported by, you maybe even be supported by your board. Uh, I hope you are <laughs> like that is truly the, the best, uh, and the way it should be for those of us in nonprofit leadership supported by your board, your staff, your volunteers. We are all, uh, we're all in this together and we're all pulling for each other to come out of it better than before. And, um, if there is anything, anything that you can think of that you would like me to, um, to talk about on this podcast to help others, if you have some suggestions for reclaiming your own time that you want to share, uh, with other people, um, please let me know. You can email me Becky at virtual executive director.com. Uh, also if you are a nonprofit leader, you can apply to join our executive director mastermind group. Just find it on Facebook and, um, and share this episode with the other productivity nerds in your life. Um, because I know that we could all use a little bit more focus, <laughs> maybe not a little bit more, a lot more focus right now on, uh, on moving our missions forward. And as I like to say, we shine brighter when we shine together. Thanks everyone. Talk to you next time.